बंदे रूप सनातन रघु जग श्री जीव गोपाल को meditate on shri lalita as her incomparable friend meditate on shri vishaka as the foremost guru distributing the teachings of love and meditate on radha kund and govardhan as givers of the sight and love of shri shri radha krishna so again if one had awakened to be a cowherd boy who would they mostly meditate on shri shri dam and subal right if you awakened to being in parental mood who would you mostly meditate on nanda yasoda rohini So this is a template. Although all the residents of Vrindavan also meditate on Radha Krishna and Lalita Vishaka, and, and anyone, even a beginner, it's not that we say well, you can't meditate on Krishna until you're pure. Yeah? So he's giving how he meditates on Krishna. He meditates on Krishna as the moon of Vrindavan. Here's an oil painting for this one, and as the lord of his leader, Shrimati Radharani. And here, Krishna as the lord of Shrimati Radharani. And he meditates on this again, Krishna as the Lord of Shrimati Radharani. He meditates on Radharani as the most beloved of Krishna. This is the sweetness of spiritual love. The devotee is giving to Krishna, and Krishna is also giving to the devotee. Yes, it's reciprocal. That's what love is about. So he's saying, meditate on this reciprocal love. And Bhakti Vinod says, Devi Radhika, the servant of yours, has fallen immensely. into the depths of various oceans of distresses through the amazing boat of your strong mercy kindly rescue the servant and make her attain the liberating shore of your lotus feet he says meditate on vishaka as the guru so we have vishaka here teaching the gopis how to decorate with flowers teaching shrimati radharani and as ramananda roy teaching lord chaitanya who's krishna in radha's mood so to meditate on vishaka as the guru And also Bhakti Nanda Thakur talks about how Vishaka is the river Yamuna, the daughter of the lotus friendly sun god Surya and the sister of Yamaraj. He says, "May Sri Yamuna Devi, the daughter of the lotus friendly sun god, always purify me. She saves one from entering the abode of her brother Yamaraj, who punishes the sinful after death." Says the Yamuna river has swans and lotuses, cows and kadamba trees. demigods in the sky to meditate on lalita as the dear most friend of shrimati radharani lalita is the confidant of radharani and he has a nice fear about how madhya soda really loves lalita lalita dancing for the divine couple and he says meditate on radhakund again Uh, we wouldn't find so much the cowherd boys and the elderly gopis meditating on Radha Kund, but this is his particular mood. He says, "Meditate on Radha Kund, which gives us the sight and love for the divine couple." And here's Radha Kund and Shama Kund, and Govardhan. So of course everybody meditates on Govardhan. Yes, no matter what mood you're in with Krishna, the Govardhan gives the sight and love of the divine couple. All right, now already we went under the shelter of the internal energy. in text 8 and now in text 9 meditating on all the devotees and now ragnath das goswami is going to meditate deeply deeply on the internal energy of the lord ratin gori li leya pita pati sondarya kiranai shachi lakshmi sacha pari bhavati so bhagya valanai Patis Karais Chandra Vali Mukha Navina Vrajasati Shipya Taradya Tam Hari Jai Taradham Bajamanaha O mind, offer your worship unto Sri Radhika, the beloved of Lord Hari. She outsigns Rati, the wife of Kamadev, Gauri, the wife of Lord Shiva, and Leela, the potency of Lord Vishnu, by the effulgence of her beauty. She defeats Sachi, the wife of Indra, Lakshmi, and Satya, Krishna's wife, by the waves of her good fortune. She defeats the pride of the newly married gopis of Raja, headed by Chandravali, through her power to control Krishna. So Radha and Krishna are one in their identity, but for the sake of pleasure pastimes, they separate themselves eternally. And Krishna enjoys this bliss of his own potency, the pleasure 
potency, who's identical with Krishna. She embodies the mellows of love. She gives Krishna pleasure and she also nourishes his devotees. She outsigns Rati, Gauri, and Leela by the effulgence of her beauty and defeats Sachi. O Radhika, you are the moonlight of bliss for the white lotuses. These are the prayers Bhakti Vinod has in his commentary. O Radhika, you are as fair as fresh Garachana, a bright yellow color, and have garments as splendid as a blue lotus. Your braids that are decorated with jewels and flowers give the appearance of a serpent's hood. So Rupa Goswami wrote this, and Sanatana Goswami objected. He said, you can't call Radha's braid like a snake. Right? And then he saw some young girls playing a little distance away and he saw a snake crawling up one of their beds. Oh, there's a snake! There's a snake! And she turned around laughing. It was her braid and then she disappeared. And then he went to Rupa. He said, yes, you're right. Radha's braids are like a snake. She's the most beloved of her father, Vrishabhanu. She defeats the pride of the other gopis. And we have this as our oil painting for this verse. This is the first time this Leela has been illustrated. This is the description in the Bhagavatam, Gopal Champu and Andhavindavan Champu, of Krishna returning to the Ras Leela. And these are the eight principal gopis, and how each of them greeted him. And right around there is angry because Krishna had left the Ras Leela. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur says in his commentary on this verse, climb in the boat of the Saki's mercy and sail into the ocean of love where you will find the lotus feet of the world. Okay, we have one more verse of instruction of perfection before we get to the benedictory verse. Saman Shri Rupe Nasmara Viva Sharadha Giri Britur Rajeshakshat Seva Lavana Viraye Tadgana Yujo Tadi Jakya Jana Shavana Nati Panchamritaminam Dayan Nitya Govardhana Manudinam Twambajamanaha Oh mind, you should every day drink the five nectars, worship, glories, meditation, listening to divine pastimes and offering obeisances and worship Govardhan according to the rules. In this way, follow the instructions of Sri Rupa and obtain the direct service of Sri Sri Radha Giridhari, who are captivated by the god of amorous love in the company of their associates in Braja. So he says, do these every day. And again, this is the instruction for the perfected devotees, but this also applies to us. Every day, anudinam, worship, Glorification, meditation, listening to divine pastimes, offering obeisances, worship, glorification, meditation, listening to divine pastimes, offering obeisances, worship, glorification, meditation, listening to divine pastimes, offering obeisances, worship, glorification, meditation, listening to divine pastimes and offering obeisances. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, congregationally chant the holy name and live in Vrindavan, at least in meditation. Here's offering of obeisances to Govardhan. Meditating at the feet of Govardhan. Now we're going to go a little bit into what does this mean to meditate. We don't have time to go into it in depth. This is from the Nectar of Instruction. Text 8 purport, Bhaktivinoda Thakur references in his commentary to text 11 of Manasitra, referencing Jiva Goswami. It's in Jiva Dharma, Harinam Chintani, it's actually all over the place. But this is just very brief. Meditation, the first stage is called Shravanadas, where we constantly hear about Krishna. The second stage is attachment, becoming acceptance, becoming attached to hearing. The third stage, is when one is chanting in ecstasy. We can explain the third stage in the third canto. At first the mind attracts the Lord like a hook and gradually the mind decreases. The third stage has five parts. Recollection, like interrupted. So who here has made real burfi? Real, real, real burfi. Who's made the real deal? My a dying art. 
Who has ever seen anyone make real burpee? Not much better. Have you ever made sweet rice? Anybody made sweet rice? A little bit better. Seen anybody made sweet rice? A little better. All right. Well, we'll have to work with that. So you first, what do you do? You take the milk and you? Boil it. Boil it. Now, do you have to stand there when it's boiling? No. No. As you first put it on the stove, when you first put it on the stove, do you have to stand there? No, you put it on the stove, and what do you do? Do you have to stir it constantly? When you first put it there? No, when you first put it there. Not in the very, very... Not in the very, very... When you first put that milk in there, and if it was cold milk, you even got condensation on the outside of the pot. So at the very beginning, you don't need to stir it all the time. You can set up the dough, and you can cut up the lettuce. So that's this stage. Interrupted. Okay, you're thinking about Krishna, but you keep interrupting it. Okay, now your milk is boiling. So now what do you have to do? Now you have to keep stirring it or it's going to burn. So this is uninterrupted. This is the next stage of, this is the second subcategory of the third stage of meditation. Uninterrupted. You're doing it, stirring it all the time. Then what happens to that milk? It becomes what? Thick. It starts, it starts to thicken. So this is the third sub-stage where it gets concentrated. Okay? Then what happens? It's getting thicker and you put in some sugar if you're making burfi. What happens when you put in the sugar? It what? It's really thick. You're doing it all the time and it's kind of expanded and constant. And here you've got your burfi. So this is samadhi. This is the stage of samadhi with the mind. This is the fifth sub-stage of the third main stage of meditation. And yes, I'm just touching this, and if you're lost, that's okay. It's in the book, in the commentary, it's in Prabhupada's books, in the NOI uh, text A purport, so you can study it more there. I don't expect you to remember all this now. But just remember the burfi, that'll help. So then the fourth stage is the real samadhi. This is the rays of the Ladini Shakti entering the heart. This is spiritual. The samadhi previous to this was material, although it's pretty far out. But this is spiritual. One's original constitutional position becomes manifested. This wonderful quote, in the beginning the mind is employed in attractive form of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, but in the higher stage there's no question of using in the mind. So the fifth stage of the third, fifth sub-stage of the third stage is a mental samadhi. This fourth stage is spiritual samadhi. And the fifth stage, Krishna comes right in front of you and says hi. Like he did to Dhruva. Dhruva was meditating on him in the heart and all of a sudden he couldn't find him in the heart anymore and there he was. So that's the fifth stage of meditation when you're seeing Krishna face to face. So that's the meditation part of this verse. Tasting the meaning of Srimad Bhagavatam in the company of devotees. And Bhaktivinoda in his song said, Every day bathe Govardhan with these five nectars. Oh, what were those five nectars again? Does anybody remember? <laughs> what were they? Yes. Worship. Worship. Glorification. 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 Meditation. Meditation. Hearing divine pastimes and? Dandavats. Oh, good. What, what was that again? I have such a hard time remembering this. Can you all tell me again? Everybody may be together. Okay. Worship, patient, meditation, hearing divine pastimes, and offering obeisances. And when should we do this? Every day. Every day. Anudina. So we had a little bit of a meditation on the meditation part. And make sure we're doing this every day. Every day. Every day. Doing what? Worship, glorification, meditation, hearing divine pastimes, offering obeisances. So these are instructions for the awakened soul, but these are also instructions for the beginner. And he also says every day worship Govardhan according to the rules, which even if you're just singing Jai Radha Madhava Kunja Mehadi Gopi Balava Giri Vada Dari, you're worshiping Govardhan. Of course, this has a particular significance for Raghunath Das Goswami, who received the Govardhan Shila that Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had been personally worshiping. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says, that Lord Chaitanya, the moon in the sky-like heart of the devotee, personally gave his Govardhan Shila to Raghunath. And why Govardhan? Because there Krishna is with his friends, Radharani is with her friends. Everybody comes to Govardhan. 
Right? Of all the devotees, Govardhan Hill is the best, Radharani says. Supplies water for drinking, honey, and fruit juice, soft grass for the transcendental earth, places for Krishna and Balaram to rest, caves when the weather is too hot or too cold or not raining, soft roots for eating, jewels for decorating the body, nice flat places for sitting, being touched by the lotus feet of Krishna and Balaram, Govardhan appears very jubilant. And Govardhan shows us how to give everything to serve Krishna and the devotees. So the devotees pray. <laughs> Too bad we don't have hobby here. It's a little bit from here. Please, Govardhan, let me live near you. And Bhaktivinoda Thakur says that for the perfected devotee, they will first serve Radha Krishna from a distance, then they will serve the intimate friends, and finally they will serve Krishna and Radha directly. But whether one's a neophyte or a perfected devotee, one goes on with wearing the garland and tilak and taking charanamrita, this is therefore called the inner path of spontaneous love, as we explained on Friday and as we explained in the book. All right, we've now come to the end of the path. There we go. We're at perfection. And now we get the benediction. And those of you who've been here all through and been singing all the verses, here we go. Mana shikshada dika dasha kavaram etan madaraya. Gira gayant yu chai sa magdi gata sarva tayatiya Sayuta shi rupanu gai habavan go kulavane Janarada krishna tu lava janarat nam salavate Becoming a follower of Sri Rupa and his companions, one who with a sweet voice loudly recites these eleven supreme verses which give instructions to the mind and strives to understand all of their meanings completely, obtains the incomparable jewel of worshiping Sri Sri Radha Krishna in the forest of Gokula. So here's the 12th verse in Devanagari on a leaf, and there's the nice jewels in Krishna's image. Following Sri Rupa, don't make up your own process, who received instructions from Lord Chaitanya and wrote them down in Bhakti Vasamrita Sindhu. Upadesha Amrita, and of course Raghunathas Goswami, who wrote this Manashiksha while living on the bank of Radha Kund. And Bhaktivinoda has two Bengali translations of this verse in his, in his commentary. One says, do this and you'll attain Krishna in Vraja, and the other says, do this in Vraja and you'll attain Krishna. So. And uh, Bhaktivinoda lists the glories of Raja, including Radharani, who has the pride of this Vrindavan is mine. So these are the splendid instructions to the mind by Raghunath Das Goswami with Bhaktivinoda Thakur's commentary. Of course, everything we know about Raghunath Das Goswami comes from Srila Prabhupada. And as we demonstrated, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta based his movement upon these instructions of Raghunath Das Goswami, the inner path that was taught by Swarup Damodar. And we see this also in our Hare Krishna movement. So for those of you who want to go right now to the entertainment, if you haven't yet gotten a copy of the book, uh, my granddaughter's in the back. We have just a few copies left. If you'd like to get a copy from her, um, she's right back there with just a few copies. There she is. Um, so we're, the seminar is over. If any of you have a copy or you want to stay and ask a few questions, we could go for five more minutes. And then I also want to go and see the entertainment. Yes. Um, you, know, you said that we should offer Krishna also our emotions. Yes. Uh, but it seems to me, if I feel emotions, it's kind of a gift from Krishna. Like I can't squeeze the emotion mm. in my heart just by wanting to. Oh. But he gives me emotions. That is so, I really like that, Kamalini. It's true that for, what Kamalini said is that we're saying we should offer Krishna our emotions, but it seems that our spiritual emotions are a gift from Krishna that I can't artificially squeeze my heart to get out some spiritual emotions to give him. Well, that's true. That's true. But what I can do is I can give Krishna my ordinary material emotions, which I have all of the time. It's very nice in, uh, when Krishna talks to the gopis at Kurukshetra, 
he makes the point that the mind intelligence, thinking, feeling, and willing, feeling also, are his energies. So we know we're supposed to think about Krishna, but we have emotions. Yes? Every day we have emotions, so many emotions, otherwise we'd be dead. You can teach a computer to think, but you can't teach a computer to have emotions. So we're having these emotions. Give those to Krishna. What will happen if you give those to Krishna, just like we're talking about meditation. In meditation, you use the material mind to think of Krishna, and at a certain point, Krishna becomes attractive, attracted, and he manifests transcendentally to the mind. You're using the mind, Kapiladev says, as a hook to capture Krishna, who then manifests. You can't force Krishna to manifest with your mind, but you can interest him. So we're having so many emotions, right? If I feel joyful, you can think, Krishna, this joy is really meant for you. Maybe I'm joyful because, you know, my kid just walked for the first time or something. Give that to Krishna. Yam krodha kama sahaja pranayadi bhiti vatsalya moha guru gaur vasevi bhavai san chinchitas from sadhvisim tanya maparete. Even if you're angry, you know, somebody defaced the sign on my door yesterday and I, I was angry. And I, I went in my room and I, I got mad at Govardhan, who's sitting in my room. And I said, Govardhan, why are you letting people do this to my sign? <laughs> because Krishna wants our emotion. You understand that? Does that make sense to you? But many, most of the, many of the emotions are negative. Doesn't matter. Yam krodha kama sahaja pranayadi bhiti. Doesn't matter. Even our so-called negative emotions are really just perversions of one of the rasas. What are the 12 rasas? Anyone know the 12 rasas? Let's, let's look at the seven secondary ones. What are they? Anger. Anger. Chivalry, which has three subdivisions. Humor. Gasoline. Fear. Comedy. And wonder. Give it to Krishna. And there's a story about Gorkishore Das Babaji that some, some, I think kids were throwing rocks at him and he started yelling at Krishna. <laughs> Krishna, why are you letting these kids throw rocks at me? Give it to Krishna. At least say, you know, this emotion is meant for Krishna. Krishna, I wish I could love you the way young boy and young girl naturally feel attracted to each other. Take that and say, it's for Krishna. It's for Krishna. If you feel, you know, sexual attraction for someone, say, Ah, oh, Krishna, if only I could feel this kind of spontaneous attraction for you. Here I am looking at this beautiful member of the opposite side. Why can't I look at you now? It's meant for you. Instead of trying to take our emotions and... I am going to be a pure thinking machine without emotions until Krishna divinely bestows spiritual emotions upon me. <laughs> it won't work anyway because we're emotional beings and it'll come out and you'll yell at somebody. You know, or you're, you're, you'll do something with somebody. So instead of doing that, take what we have. This is what they're saying. Take what you have. Take the mind, which is thinking, feeling, and willing, and give it to Krishna. Don't just give Krishna your thoughts and don't just give Krishna your will, give him your feelings. In fact, we won't be able to give Krishna our thoughts and our will if we don't give him our feelings. It won't work. We're, we're integrated persons. And so if, we, if we're using all of our emotions for our family and our friends and politics and, you know, and, and, and we just try to give Krishna the rest, it won't work. Yes? Are you saying speak it out loud, like what you do with your Well, I don't think it's I mean, I did it here too, but I usually just think about it. At least in my mind. No, I'm not always going to say that in front of other people. They're kind of like, excuse and me. You say thank you, thank you, thank you. Like, sure. when we feel so much gratitude. We feel gratitude, we feel joy, we feel wonder, the Adbhutaras. Yes. So, as you're hearing about Sandy, so you're not being angry at him, but you're connecting it with him. You don't get that, okay? Because Krishna's really, he's the cause of all causes. 
you know, in, they, they say that between husband and wife, you know it's over when, when the emotions are flat. If they're still fighting, they're still attached. You know? You don't get furious with people that you don't care about. You just don't. You know, if somebody I don't even know and don't even care about says, well, you're a flaming idiot, I'm like, so what? I don't care what you think about me. But if it's someone I'm attached to, then my emotions kick in. So even if you're angry, you're like, Krishna, what are you doing? Why are you letting somebody do that? I mean, come on. Because you're feeling like that anyway. You understand? I came back and I saw this and I'm like, well, that really was rude of somebody. But I don't want to just be mad at the somebody who cares about the somebody. So we are just trying to express our feelings to Krishna. Connect them with Krishna. If you want to connect with Krishna. Now, if you don't connect your feelings with Krishna, then you're going to keep them with the world. And then your, your connection with bhakti is just going to be on the bodily and, and thought platform. But bhakti is ultimately about emotion. I don't get angry at Krishna too often. Don't worry about it. Yeah. Yeah? Yes, Malti. Um, I don't get angry at Krishna too often, but some of um, the thoughts, and even in general public, people who are believers in God, they become angry with God. Hmm. So how do you offer your anger at God? How do you offer your anger with affection? With affection. Not with hatred, not with malice. You don't want any malice in there. It should be affectionate anger. You know, like, I, I know one couple where the man, wonderful, wonderful gentleman, but a very forgetful one. He's, he never remembers his keys. He's always locking them in the car or locking them in the trunk, you know, leaving them at home. And his wife would go, did you lock the keys in the trunk? I so she loves him. You understand? There's no malice. Or like, for your, a child, you know, you'll act angry to get the message to them. That right, or sometimes you're actually angry. I'm, yeah. When my son Keisha was eight or nine, he went with some, like, without my knowledge or permission, he took an inflatable raft, and he did not know how to swim at the time, and he took an inflatable raft across the street. You remember in North Carolina, there's, there's the river right across the street with a waterfall? So he's taking an inflatable, oh, now where's Keisha, you know? He was just gone. Oh, he went with Druva. I saw, you know, the other kids. Oh, oh, yeah, he went with Druva. Where, where did they go? I don't know. They inflated that raft that was under the... They went, what? You know, and we run across the street, and there they are in this raft about to go over a waterfall. Do you think I was just like, oh, dear, can you come to the shore? That's a little dangerous. I was furious. But it, because I love him. You understand? I didn't want him going over the waterfall. <laughs> So there, there, you could be really angry, yeah. or you can be really angry at the demons, you know. How do you really angry at the demons? That's sometimes an impetus for preaching. Peter Burwash was showing us all these evidences of Kali Yuga, so you can use your anger in Krishna's service in that way. You know, all these people that are killing cows and killing unborn babies and, and society and polluting the earth. And, you don't have to just say, there are people killing unborn babies and cows, and we should preach. You can have some emotion there. Yeah, with two more minutes, and then we really do have to go. Yes? So, I have been facing, this is for us to few years, we are facing some misrepresentation. Some what? Misrepresentation. Misrepresentation. False, false fabrication. False fabrications of yourself. I'll give you an example. People are telling lies about you? Yeah, maybe uh, I, in my lifetime, I never saw a drug, drug material, even from nearby. Uh -huh. uh, only the TV people catching the screen, those things on the only TV screen as well. Okay. So my real computer, I didn't see. But there were people who were uh, verbally abusing, saying that just to hurt me or harm me or hurt me, it's only me, my mind. Okay. Harm me is if they give, uh, take another step, uh, testimony to somebody, it can be harm me or Okay. They, they, they said he, he sells drugs. Interesting. He sells drugs. Imagine. 
I had never seen a drug. Uh, and never even and seen, and now they're saying you're a seller. So this is a false verification. Uh -huh. Some reason. They have some reason, maybe. Exactly. But, uh, I don't know how to these kind of things uh, keep happening. Uh -huh. the bad influence, wherever I go, this kind of bad influence of somebody is traveling with me. Ah, uh, well, whenever we have something that travels with us. It is not true. Well, my suggestion, because I'm sorry, it's just that we're running out of time. Well, I have, I have two, just because of time, sir, I'm, I'm so sorry. I'd, I'd like to hear the whole story, I would, but I'm, I'm just concerned. My granddaughter will be furious if she's late for the entertainment. And then she'll pout for the rest of the day and it will be very difficult for me. So the, my suggestion to you, according to Bhagavatam, is you read and meditate on the story of the Shaman Takajul. If people are defaming you and you are innocent, you meditate on the story of the Shaman Takajul and this defamation will go away. So that is my main request and suggestion. Shaiman Taka Jewel. It is in Krishna book. It is in the 10th canto. And it's, it's more than one chapter. And you meditate on this story and you'll become uh, free from this defamation. And I would also suggest you pray to Krishna and you say, my dear Krishna, if I am defaming anybody, please reveal to me so I can stop this. So I thank you very much. Again, we just have a few copies in the back if you'd like one before you leave. Raghunathas Goswami ki. Bhaktivinoda Thakur ki. Srila Prabhupada ki. Nuvrindavan ki. Gaur Premanandan. Hare Krishna.